Could Kepler 22 be harbor life? Will we ever discover an Earth-like exoplanet with lakes, forests, animals, and perhaps some humanoid aliens? What kind of world will it be? Perhaps it will be smaller than Earth, perhaps it will be larger. These kinds of planets are being searched for by astronomers right now, but it is difficult to find them. Our current methods allow us to discover many huge and enormous planets, but it is far more difficult to find planets the size of Earth. There are, of course, certain exceptions. Kepler 22b was the first planet to ever be discovered that resembled Earth. We now know that this extraordinary planet, which was discovered in 2009, is orbiting in the star that it calls home's habitable zone. What, though, is a livable zone? And what distinguishing qualities does Kepler 22b possess? Could life exist on this planet? Let's investigate. How do scientists first discover an exoplanet? Although there are many different methods, direct imaging, radial velocity, and transit method are the most used. As of right moment, we are aware that various methods are more sensitive to various types of planets. For instance, to directly scan an exoplanet, the direct imaging technique uses big telescopes outfitted with adaptive optics, which improves their performance. The exoplanets with very elongated orbits that are warmer, younger, and more massive are those to which this method is most sensitive. In fact, the larger an orbit's angular size is in the sky, the simpler it is to see it and the more stretched it is. The well-known Doppler effect is used in the radial velocity method. In order to obtain the host star's spectrum, astronomers essentially need a spectrograph. The star will oscillate during an orbit because the star and the planet are gravitationally connected to one another and will both move around their shared center of mass. This type of harmonic movement will manifest as a Doppler shift in the spectral lines. Because these enormous planets pull the star more and increase the amplitude of the harmonic oscillation, the method is most sensitive to exoplanets with a large mass orbiting near to their host star perpendicular to the plane of the sky. The final way is the transit method, which is also one of the most popular and effective. Indeed, this is a game of shadows and light. A periodic drop in the radiation from the host star that is received on Earth is used to identify the exoplanet. In fact, picture yourself gazing at a star. A planet happens to cross the star disk at a specific moment. A small eclipse of the stellar disk, or a reduction in the star's brightness as a result of an exoplanet passing in front of it, is what you would observe. Large exoplanets in tight orbits to their host star are the ones to which this method is most sensitive. The transit method was applied to our planet, Kepler 22b. The well-known Kepler Space Telescope, a potent tool for finding exoplanets, is the telescope used for this kind of research. Kepler searches for planets that transit stars by detecting dips in the brightness of more than 150,000 stars. This method leads to the discovery of planets and planet candidates. To confirm a signal as a planet, you need at least three transits. Why is Kepler 22b so unique? It was the first planet whose location in a star's habitable zone had been independently verified. The orbital area of a star where an Earth-like planet may potentially have liquid water on its surface and support life is what is meant by this term. Since liquid water is necessary for all life on Earth, it is assumed that alien life would also require it for defining a habitable zone. Even while further research is necessary because liquid water on the surface alone is not enough for a planet to support life as we know it, at least it's something. Let's investigate what is known about this potential Earth twin. We are aware that it is 600 light years away. The planet's 290-day orbit around a sun-like star is similar to Earth's orbit, despite the fact that it is larger. Even though it is a little bit smaller and cooler than our sun and is in the same class as it, the planet's host star is a G-type. Compared to the light we receive from the sun, Kepler 22b star provides around 25% less brightness. 
We also know that Kepler 22b is the smallest planet that has been discovered so far to orbit a star like our Sun in the habitable zone. Its radius is 2.4 times greater than the radius of the Earth, just to give some specifics. Kepler 22b's discovery brings the search for planets like Earth one step closer, while scientists are yet unsure of whether its composition is primarily rocky, gaseous, or liquid. It's not easy to find planets the size of Earth or smaller. In reality, as we previously stated, the majority of contemporary techniques enable us to discover giant planets with large sizes and highly eccentric orbits. Yet, scientists occasionally strike it lucky. For instance, other small planets with orbits more akin to those of Venus and Mars that orbit stars smaller and cooler than our Sun have just been confirmed on the very boundaries of the habitable zone. The team that found Kepler 22b was led by William Barucki, Kepler's chief investigator at NASA Ames Research Center at Moffett Field, California, who commented, Fortune smiled upon us with the detection of this planet. Take a look at this plot to better understand what we're talking about. On the x-axis, we have the planet's semi-major axis, which measures how far away it is from its star. This increases as we move from the origin to the right. On the y-axis, we have the planet's semi-major axis. The first transit was captured just three days after we declared the spacecraft operationally ready. We witnessed the defining third transit over the 2010 holiday. Can you picture it? Living on Kepler 22b would need a lot of swimming. It's also feasible that the planet's outer envelope has a volatile element-rich composition, which would make it the smallest gaseous dwarf known to science. Even though Kepler 22b is significantly closer to its host star than the Earth is to the Sun, the brightness of the star is less than that of the Sun together. These two factors indicate that the planet's surface temperature is moderate, which is suitable for life as we know it. Of course, the environment affects everything. It would be really chilly without it, around minus 11 degrees Celsius. But, if there were an atmosphere and a greenhouse effect comparable to that of Earth, the planet would have a pleasant average temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. The Kepler science team examines observations of potential planets using ground-based telescopes and the Spitzer Space Telescope. Only from ground-based observatories during the spring through early autumn can one view the star field that Kepler observed in the constellations Cygnus and Lyra. Which candidates can be confirmed as planets are determined using the information from these additional observations. We are aware that Kepler 22b is not the only planet to have been discovered in the habitable zone thus far. More than 1,000 new confirmed exoplanets have also been found by Kepler, roughly tripling the number previously known. Many of these candidates orbit in the host star's habitable zone and are around the size of Earth. Follow-up observations are necessary to confirm the authenticity of candidates. As many as 16 of the 1,780 identified extrasolar planets are situated in their star's habitable zone, where temperatures are just right for supporting life. For instance, surface water evaporates into space when planets circle too closely to their respective suns. The planet is too hot and lacks the prerequisites for a habitable zone. An unsuitable planet could be on the opposite side. This is true for planets that orbit their host star at a great distance. Any surface water is frozen in this region. A planet's size is important as well. A small planet cannot sustain an atmosphere, while a giant world will have a suffocating atmosphere. Kepler 186f, a planet recently discovered 493 light years from Earth, is around the size of Earth and is in the habitable region of its solar system. The majority of known exoplanets at this time are bigger and hotter than Earth, which makes them reasonably simple to find but uninteresting for the hunt for life. Regrettably, subsequent research revealed that the majority of the planets discovered in the habitable zone are failures in that they cannot support life. For instance, Gliese 582c, the first super-Earth discovered in the habitable zone, was one of the most promising planets. Yet it was eventually discovered that this planet had harsh surface conditions, perhaps resembling Venus. 
Here's where the video ends. Do you have any opinions on Kepler 22b? Tell us in the comment section below. And if you liked the video, please share it and I'll see you again on the channel soon.